to. But Definitely not. Of course not. But it can happen. So, with that being said, let's go into round five, see what these players are facing against, or see how they're going to come back. Because we know youth. Yeah. It's going to be the biggest thing of what is the game plan for Minerva, and what is the game plan, honestly, for youth. Youth can't just say, okay, I'm going to play my own game plan and let Minerva do its thing. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get punished. Definitely. So we do have here, looks like Mart, uh, Miles here is going to be going first. Passing a turn, discarding Tempest. Victor's look like he's coming in. Drive check. Here's the thing now. We'll see what my, uh, Martin does. Is he going to use that CB for whatever cards he has, or is he going to save it for later? A lot of times, if your Youthberg player you're on the upper side uses that one CB you give them, it might not be a bad idea to swing at a rear guards if they give you any. Just damage denied that Tempest turn. Yeah, so he could have actually chose, chose, choose to call if you want to, right? Off of oh. skill of the inspiring youth. I believe so. I yeah. don't believe it's a mandatory effect. This looks like he's going to be attacking here on his grade two turn. Victor is going to be taking your turn now, discarding the Kaibere. Targets, Regalia targets to add. Yeah, so Soul Charge. So the ability is up to one for both. You can either choose up to one card with youth in its card name, or up to one grade two or less unit card. Yeah, yeah, thought so. Okay, looks like it's going to be... Not, they want to use that Drill Angel to further more targets. Uh, looks like they're going to use Capri here. Going to Soul Blast the Full Bow. Going to look at the top three. Choosing one to Superior Call. That's going to be a Drill oh, Angel. That's really target. big. So Drilling Angel has become such an amazing card inside yes. of Minerva. Yes. Just being able to reset your cards. Because the yeah. whole point is soul blasting those specific units, but call them to the rear guard, get your multi-attack, get your uh, boosters, get all the stuff, all the goodies. And once you use them, unfortunately, the Minerva support itself has no way to put them back in soul. Yeah. That's where Drilling Angel comes back in. Uh -huh. So now uh, there's Angelica there on the rear guard circle. Going to be guarding with the Wayfaring Angel for five. Attacking here. That's over trigger. Hey, that's and that's nice really thing. good that they'd have a great three on the rearguard circle as well to get extra drive checks. There we go. Happy accidents. <laughs> Attacking for 200 million with twin drive. This is honestly really uh, important for my, uh, Miles because it's do I waste the PG or not even waste? Do, is. Do I take the chance of Twin Drive revealing triggers, or do I sacrifice the PG now so, you know, I stay at low damage? I, I like the idea of going staying at low damage here. It's very early into the game just yet, and putting yourself in a very dire situation, putting you on three before he gets into his grade three turn, especially with how much pressure Minerva can push out sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's so, so daunting to deal with. See, Minerva's biggest advantage on that pressure aspect is the fact that she basically has a pseudo-persona right effect. Yeah. Like the second you put another regalia into soul, there's front, 5k to the front row. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And like 15k shields are no longer like a 1 to pass, or 2 to pass anymore. It's just a 1 now. Like, we have, have Angelica on the board on that side. Well, granted, let's more focus on what a use happening right now. I don't see a much of an impressive board right now. Uh, I mean, he could still go into Gust here. Or even go into Tempest to get rid of the Angelica. The PG is going to be nice, but I think Tempest is the better option. That Angelica brings so much value to Minerva as an attacker, as a countercharger, as Regalian soul. Five Tempest is going to reveal two to the top. That's going to send back the Angelica. That's going to be really big here. Over trigger goes to hand. That is a bit on the left side, but at least it's a bit of shield to deal with the Minerva onslaught of pressure dude, that he can dude, force no out. Dude, no joke. I know it's sad seeing the over trigger got to go. Like everybody wants to trigger it. You yeah, know, definitely, to get the benefits because yeah. it is just a, an amazing card and it does sway games. But at the same time, like I, it's a hand, it's a 50k shield. It's definitely. basically a one card guard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. That's that's so true. And now they're taking note here. This is gonna be a 30k guard with 15 since they hit a defensive draw. It makes them 38. Tempest goes into soul after riding down. Gonna go back into regular youthberg. 
So Minerva right now is has only one face up CB. If we have an Angelica in our hand right now, yes, uh, that one CB can go a long way. Rifling through his soul now that Kama Miles right on. Gonna take a look at the top of his deck, see if he can find uh, some targets to sift through here. Looking through his drop zone. I believe I see an Angelica, which is going to be, honestly, you don't want to put it in soul, but at the same time you do. It's a Regalia. It's a grade three. Hey, yeah. Pseudo Persona ride. Definitely. Go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but sometimes when you see, like, PGs and nothing but triggers, it's like, hmm, what do I put? And, well, Chalice is a card. It doesn't say unit. It says card. Card, yeah. And even though it's not something you're going to be able to use this turn, uh, getting it out of the deck now gives you higher chances of hitting more triggers. Anyway, so this is just going to be great. Rifling through, trying to see whether or not they want to commit any extra rear guards to the board. The big thing right now is the main phase Minerva's tactic, basically, I like to call it, because she does have the nice ability of Soul Bless 1, Look at the top card and then choose to put it either in soul or leave it on the top. Uh, that effect comes into play two ways. One, looking at the top card, uh, seeing if there's a trigger or a normal unit or a piece on top. But at the same time, it can set up a booster because you still have in your ride line Melissa, which means soul bless one, look at the top card. Oh, it's a trigger, it's not a trigger, whatever. I can put Melissa as a booster. That didn't happen, but hey, that is a line of play. <laughs> yeah, you could go for something like that. So now they are going to be Soul Blasting here. I think you Soul Blast like your generic cards and try not to Soul Blast the Kamaliles or Grog here. There's the Melissa coming in as a booster now. Yep. Yeah. We're charging one. We'll be attacking again. And it was a normal unit Soul Charge, so the way I like to see Soul Charging normal units like that is, okay, next card's Higher chances of a trigger now. Way higher sometimes, like an extra 20%, sometimes 18 depending on the matchup. So he's going to take that rear guard swing. Guarded a guard. I think they guarded a vanguard for like 38. Uh, there was a no pass. Yep. Hey, JJ, how many times has this happened to you? I uh, just successfully guarded my opponent's turn. Uh -huh. I've committed a lot of shield. It was not ideal, but you know, I survived. I haven't turned to play. Stand, draw, heal trigger. I I think I would like to say that happens to me all the time. <laughs> Hello. Hey, he's calling these heal triggers. He's like, you know what? Give me. <laughs> I really want to pick this man's brain. I, I do want to note to the viewers at home, you do not have to call off of the Youthberg skills here. You may. You can choose if you want to. The wording of up to, because it says up to, up to means zero, one, to the uh, number it is specified. Yes. So in Yuthgur's case, it's up to one, means you can call one, but up to is also zero. You can choose zero and call none. Yeah, exactly. But I think they just don't want to commit too many cards out of their hand, so they went for a play that allows them to keep more shield in hand, and especially they know that the big Persona right tournament is coming up soon. They don't want to put themselves in a situation they can't really guard anymore. They've been kind of, Yuthgur has been kind of on the back step of uh, this game a lot. Like, not a lot of cards have been going optimal. Tr heal triggers have been called as rear guards. It's been a not really smooth ride lately. Especially since he didn't have a rear guard slot here. He didn't have a way to give that critical trigger. And there we go. That's a Persona ride. That is dangerous. That's 15k to the front row. See if Victor can close this game out here. That makes your uh, Drilling Angel of 25. That makes your other attackers 15k more. Like, you can push up that Melissa in the back row and make her a 23k attacker if you do really want to commit cards from hand. We still know that from the ride line, you have your grade 2. You have your main multi-attacker still in your soul, ready to go. Um, I believe, honestly, I cannot recall. I think Drilling Angel put another one. Granted, Angelica couldn't have gone. Uh, regardless, if you have <laughs> more chamomile in soul, that uh, just means more multi-attack. Yes, yes. You're right. If he did have an Angelica here, he could try to go for a counter charge play. But looks like he got himself another Melissa. Hey, man. Boosters are boosters. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this, this is good. It's been a weird 
gatekeeping type of game. Like we haven't seen Minerva have more than one CB available to her for a lot of while. I mean, it's based on how they've been guarding, right? Um, they've been guarding like relatively aggressively, so they've not been able to have access to all those plays. So the Soul Blast here. See the top card. Get the Melissa. Basically, the, the thing I was talking about earlier done now. Like, now you see a trigger on top. You've gotten yourself a booster with uh, Angelica's ability. All effects to the Drilling Angel, which I find very interesting. Granted, I, the critical... F5 damage doesn't really matter, does it? I, uh, I agree with them doing this, to be honest. Because your Vanguard could potentially rip another trigger. Exactly. And that can go to a side lane that you need to guard with. Time to shine. I love the fact that you don't boost the first swing. The first swing has 20 drive. The second swing has one drive. So having an extra booster is basically like you hit a trigger. One and nothing. Yeah, but still, uh, hello, 35 boosted by 8. Let's see, 43k double critical. Perfect guard. And attacking. Damage check. Nope. That's game. Victor Zhang taking it over Miles Martin. Minerva showing it up from set eight, rising to the occasion. And we didn't even see, I like to say, full blown, full combo Minerva. We saw just Vanguard swings and Rearguard swings without actually calling anything to Rearguard to actually do the whole multi attack concept. I, I think it's just due to the fact that it's a very good tempo deck <laughs> that can like always look at the top deck whenever it wants to. Due to soul blasting regalias or discarding what you need to, stuff like that. And it gets its pressure from being able to seal it. And also, it also might have helped too. The fact, you know, seeing that old trigger drive was, uh, <laughs> was not the worst thing. Drawing two extra cards there to be able to make use of them weren't that bad. Yeah, that was pretty good. Overall, this has been a very interesting game. The, the heal triggers calling, I can't lie, is uh, complexing me. Yes. But hey. There's a strategy there. Each player has their own. Like, we can't be in the player's heads. They got something they're brewing. Honestly, now the more that I think about it and the more that you say about the te tempo thing about the Minerva, I can kind of understand it. Youthberg is a very explosive deck. 